everyone. Hmm. Today I'm not pouring, but I am doing something with the results of a pouring. Now this is going to be, what shall I say, a prototype. First, this is what is known as foam core. It has cardboard on one side and cardboard on the other and inside is um, stiff foam, styrofoam probably. This makes it uh, quite sturdy but light and it has another property which we will get to later. So what am I doing? Well, I am going to stick this double-sided tape onto it on both sides. And I'm going to get rid of this because it keeps on moving. And I don't need a, a paint-proof surface right now. Here we are. I want to put it on the whole thing and make sure that it is stuck down well. So I will use my scraper thing, which probably has a proper name. There are other ones that um, are a slightly different shape that get used by scrap because I can't remember why I got this one rather than the other style. But these. Okay. That will do for the moment. Trim the edges. side. Of course the problem with sticky things is that they stick, which of course is the point, but not when you, when they stick to things you don't want them to stick to, like your scissors. Though I think you can get non-stick scissors. They exist anyway. But these are not non-stick scissors. And down the other side. This time I want to make it line up with the edge of that one. Oh well. I'm not going to try to unstick it since it's very sticky, which is the point of the double sided tape. Because you want it to stick. And I definitely want it to stick. my scissors. <laughs> there we are. And there. Now that's a useful bit of double sided tape. Maybe I'll stick it to something. Right. And the other side, which is in fact this side.
Okay, so now I have a piece of foam core and my nice double sided tape can go away. Yes, that's tape. It's enormously wide, but it is still tape. Most double sided tape you find is like that wide, which is fine if you want to tape really small things. But if I want to make a sticky surface, then that stuff is better. So now what am I going to do with this foam core that has a sticky surface on both sides covered nicely with stuff? I am going to employ my big shot. Yes, it's a die cutting machine, which I really have fun with. I'm very glad I bought it. But yes, I am going to cut this foam core. And I'm just going to move this aside. I'm going to cut this foam core, which will be tricky because it is quite thick and thicker than you really ought to. Cut A. So that's my sandwich. My do not cut plate is underneath the die, which is a lot of little hexagons. You can't really see that very well, but it is. And my foam core and my cutting plate, which I alternate with side A and side B so as to wear it evenly. So this stuff is quite thick, it's five millimeters thick, and it, by all rights it shouldn't be able to go into the machine. But if you are very careful, then you can cut it. And look at that bowing, or bowing. It's, it's even bent it. But we now have these nice little hexagons. And I will do a few more. the other side and again now it's the B side and the coming plan is that you stick the plate in under the machine and leave a gap here so that you are so that the plate goes in before you're trying to force the foam core in and notice I'm holding that there so that I can put, push the plate in. Then you start turning it. Then you keep pushing it. And it starts to cut. And you can hear that click, click, click. Wow. Ow. Be careful or it will hit you, like it just did me. But we have some more little nice little hexagons. Oh, you know, that, that looks rather cool there. So we put our hexagons to the side. And just try not to lose them under the under the machine. And because I want to be efficient, I want to use up every little bit.
I am cutting it up so that I have little bits well these bits are too small but these bits you could probably get some more hexagons out so I will We're not done with the little hexagons, even though we're done with the foam core. Because this is where the acrylic skins come in. Or, well, actually they're sheets of photo paper, but still. So, here we have a poor result. Result of a poor, not that it was poor. And yes, I am going to cut little hexagons from it. Yes, you know where I'm going with this. Part of the reason I chose this one, because of course it is rather difficult to, uh, you know, pick and choose what bits to use when you've just got this massive thing of little hexagons. Um, and also, you can't move it around much unless you want to cut it up. So I chose this one because I'm thinking that there's a lot of little bits of interest everywhere. So I'll start with this direction. A side. And so we Cut out some nice little hexagons. I know I should have got myself a container. Rats. Okay, so we are scattering little hexagons all over the table. But you can see they are pretty nice, even if I say so myself. Let's see. There. So, we have our little tiny hexagons. So, I will remove the bits up and drop all the bits on the floor. And knock things over with my hair. Right. So, as you may have surmised, most of my cunning plan involves actually I think I'll use this yeah that makes it easier except that then I cut holes in it that's no good so you peel the tape off and you stick pretty acrylic pour to 
one side then you take the tape off the other side and take the tape off the other side you say ah oh, where's one that looks good with it uh, that bit and then you stick it so you have a pretty little hexagon but now we get to the real experimental bit of this will it work Yes, it will. It now has a hole through which you can thread eye pins or string. I think eye pins would be better. And hopefully it will not split down the middle and break its, its integrity. So, I expect some of you are wondering what eye pins are. These are eye pins. It's a pin and it has an eye, a little loop. And you can put it through there and have it fall all the way through. Okay. I'll just do another one then. to get it off. Okay. And we stick one on. And we take the covering off and we stick another one on and this time we just put the eye pin itself through that should work inside okay well I did say it was experimental and we take a one step looper which is got something stuck in it come on right no, I don't do it with that one okay Experiment only partially successful. Definitely not. Oh boy. Well. <laughs> Even if you can't stick eye pins through, you can stick the string through, or you can glue a bale on. 
So I still think it is a partial success. So and you can watch me while I do the rest. Okay, so we have a bunch and we still have a bunch of these, but that's okay. Because the next question is, how do we finish them off? In a non-violent way. And this here yellowish greenish thing is a silicon pot holder which I'm using not for its heat proof properties but for its non-stick properties and this is Judkins Diamond Glaze, which, while not as strong as a resin, is still pretty good. And quite easy to apply. toothpick here, but a spready knife will do. Just get it to the edges. And yeah, it wants to it wants to move. Well, I'm not sure how to solve that. How can you have a non-stick surface where things stick to it? If any of you have ideas, that would be good. Please comment on your ideal surface for putting stuff down on so that it doesn't stick or the glue or paint doesn't stick or it doesn't stick to the surface because it's stuck there with glue or paint and yet also a surface where it's not moving around all over the place while you're trying to spread your varnish on it.
pretty wretched thing. I really do not understand how Sabrina of Swab Arts has the patience to pop all the bubbles in her paintings by hand with, an, with a craft knife. And yet she does. So bravo for her. I can't do it. <laughs> ah, got it. Yeah, see that one over the edge. Time to let it dry. Adieu.